You could have heard this episode one week early on our Patreon, patreon.com slash IndieHeadsPodcast. But join us for as low as $1 a month. You're going to see episodes early, gain access to our Discord server, and get yourself an Indie Heads Podcast sticker. All of our upcoming episodes will go to our Patreon. $40 hours so it hits our public podcast feeds. But if you're hearing this through our Patreon feed, we thank you so much for your support. We especially want to thank our Real Ones patrons, including Beck Etienne, George Mikowski, James Boss, Holiday Kirk, Marcy Anime, Chance Holdup, Dwayne Moffman, Josiah Duncan, Jenna, Matt Cameron, Grant in the Back of My Dragula, Pablo Escobar's Hippos, Jeremy Bull, Ronaldi Newpin, Heath and Catherine, Parker Gross, Last Man on Earth Row 1, Andrew Grieve, Listen Up Nerds, Matthew Taylor, Breen Hare, Drew Wharton, I Like Books, Sarah Moore, Griff Ballard, Max Kibazinski, Mark Berry, Cal 50, on August 8, 2004, a tour bus belonging to the Dave Matthews Band dumped 800 pounds of human waste onto a sightseeing boat. Chris Wade, Midwest Maxwell, Kevin John, Jake Wald, Grant, Keep Autism Weird, Rob Marino, Max, Dylan, Zach, Gavin Varney Freak, and Maze Farms. To become a real one, consider supporting us for $5 a month on Patreon or receive a bonus episode every month and get a shout out at the top of the pod. Anyways, though, enjoy the episode. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to FYC, an Indie Heads podcast series. Uh, going over new music, the very sporadic series we do. Uh, I'm here, Maddie, along with uh, my good friend, Delaney Moffman, uh, making a special guest appearance. But Delaney is not the only person here, as we are joined today uh, by Truth Club. We're joined by Travis, Kim, and Yvonne from Truth Club. Welcome to the pod. Thanks for having Hello. us. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, very glad to have you guys on. Uh, I will say the last band that we had on the series uh, just recently broke up, so I'm really hoping that we do not cause such an ordeal to happen. I do not want there to be an <laughs> Indie Heads podcast FYC curse, which has already taken Strange Ranger and hopefully no other bands. So, uh, <laughs> so just want to want to. I'm gonna cast. I'm gonna jinx the curse. Hopefully, if I mention it offhand. Just the, the curse will be jinxed. It will be no more. We can move on. Uh, but me personally speaking, I've been a big fan of you guys since your record in 2019, Not an Exit, uh, which I still maintain is one of the best debut records of the last decade or so. Uh, I that That's a record that at the time I was like, why is nobody paying attention to this band? This band is awesome and amazing. So I'm very glad that you guys have been having like a hell of a 2023 so far. Like just tons of great press. Uh Shows are doing great. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, and yeah, just it's. It, I'm glad that you guys are having a great year because you know when I first heard rumblings about this new record, uh, from from our mutual friend, uh, Mike Callow from Sipsman, I was like, oh man, this is we're cooking things. This is gonna be it's gonna be the year of Truth Club, and I really do feel like it has been the year of Truth Club. So, I guess my first question to you guys is, you know, now that we're like about a month after the release, uh, you guys just got off a tour with Squirrel Flower. Um, I mean, how do you guys feel about the release of the record and how people are reacting to it? I mean, <clears throat> I think it's been kind of, as you said, I mean, I think I feel like it has been a hell of a 2023 has been a hell of a year. It's been a year of Truth Club, which has been has felt really rewarding. I think that the response has been like much more, much more overwhelmingly positive than I like could have imagined i mean like i just try not in <clears throat> context like of releasing music i just i try not to have expectations like you know because i don't want to set myself up for disappointment because i'm someone who is very sensitive to disappointment so um but i i feel like i have not had to put myself in the position of trying to uh you know self-soothe or anything because like yeah, the response has been just very overwhelmingly positive. I mean, we've, like you said, we've gotten to play like a lot of really cool shows this year and like, yeah, like all the press and everything everyone's had to say about the record so far has, has made me feel really good. And I feel just really good about the writing process and like recording the record. It was like a really positive experience and like felt really fulfilling. And so like, I'm glad that that's translated, you know, like that, <clears throat> a, a fun record to make has translated to like uh music that it seems like a lot of people seem to enjoy as much as we 
in making it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that it's very funny because we, uh, Delina, we were, we were like chatting beforehand because it, it's, it's great to hear that there was, it was a good time making the record because, you know, there's definitely moments where bands like making records, it's just really fucking tough and they come out of it, you know, like, like they just went through, like they went through no man's land in world war one. Um, because, you know, the, the, we were talking where at the same time, this is this is definitely a record that's like very, very dark in at, at times, or at least there's definitely a bit of a like a cloud over over this record in terms of the mood, which, again, I, I should say it's a cloud that I love because, you know, uh, I'm a depressed motherfucker and I love depressed motherfucking music. Um, so Dele, you, you had a kind of like, like a similar question where, you know, in, despite there being kind of a, a cloud of sorts over parts of this record, there definitely is moments of light. So I'll let Delaney kind of, cause this, this was, this is something that she brought up that I really, really agreed with on, on her assessment of the record. Yeah, dude. Uh, to me, this feels, the album feels, uh, very, very accurate to my own mental health struggles, which I feel like I don't find often. Um, like usually, uh, things are really like faffy or kind of sensationalized in a way, but this is like, I would show this person to, I would show this album to someone and be like, this is what seasonal depression feels like, by the way. But that being said, um, there's these few moments of like, that feel like little shreds of hope. I would note one at the end of exit cycle. And uh, there's also a lyric in Is This Working? Is there still a blossom yearning to return to form and carve a path again? And those moments to me feel really important on the album. Um, do y'all have any, any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I don't... <clears throat> yeah, I, I think that it's important. I mean, like, I, I think I've talked some you know, and like throughout like being asked questions about like lyrical content and stuff and sort of like the overall like emotional quality of the record. Like it's obviously very dark or it can't and it it goes to like pretty dark places at times. And, you know, I think it was I think I've talked about writing lyrics and like the theme as kind of being like an exercise and kind of going back after like a period of pretty like immense depression and like sort of looking at what I was like writing about or thinking about and just, and then trying to like the exercise of like trying to draw from that when I wasn't in a place of like, you know, in that just like doleful place of, um, and, and then just kind of like, you know, compartmentalize those things into songs, you know? And, and I think that, I was able to sort of like write about those themes, I think in a more self-aware way of like, you know, it's like if you, there's like a, there's like a, if you're going to share music and if you're going to share music, especially that's like dark, I think it's important to sort of like tread the line, you know, like toe a line between like what is like helpful and like in a way and like what is like, cause if the whole point of writing a song, like if I'm, the point was to share these songs, which that was the point, you know, like, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's some like darkness that can be a bit grotesque or just like, just doesn't feel helpful to share, you know, it's just like, it pulls everyone else down too, you know, or it's like, and I don't think that that's very helpful, you know, maybe it's helpful for me to sit around and write a song like that. And it's like really upsetting and horrible. And I just, <laughs> that's an exercise for myself, but like for shared music, that doesn't feel helpful. And and just to speak to the point of like those moments or whatever, like, I, I think that I was, it was cool to be able to write from a removed place because it's like, I think I could inject a little bit of that hope or like it, it and it didn't, doesn't feel unnatural. Like it didn't feel like, Oh, I like need to like, it, it, it felt like a natural sort of like conclusion or like writing from this place of like reflection rather than being like immersed in those sort of feelings you know does that make sense exactly yeah because i mean exit cycle especially is is a song that like really really like i think that that encapsulates the entire record so well uh of all the light and darkness and just in in, in many ways 
the like leveling up you guys have done since your last record, which like, again, I love the first record a lot. And I love this record also. Um, and there's definitely like a scrappiness of that first album that is, that is not missing on this, on this record. There's definitely still sort of, especially in places like, uh, like blue eternal, for example, um, where you still have that kind of that scrappiness that, that, you know, sort of the, uh, like almost wiry kind of post-punk influence, but in general, this record feels so much more, uh, it's so much more musically ambitious, but it doesn't come off that way on first listen. Like it's a very subtle ambitiousness that you guys are going for, like really going for big emotional moments. Like at the end of exit cycle, uh, with some of like the, the melodies and harmonies, um, the, the outro is this working where, you know, a lot of the songs are kind of, you know, your standard lay songs. And then it's this working as a sort of like, uh, this this you know, almost near six minute epic that kind of jumbles all over the place in terms of like time signatures and melodies and all this stuff. Um, so I, I guess in the recording of this record, you know, compared to the last one, uh, like were you guys really tempting to like, hey, we want to you know really level up our songwriting, or did it's like, hey, we kind of have this nice thing going on this first one, let's just kind of see how things go and sort of make a natural progression of sorts you know, on, on the next one, but I'm, I'm intrigued by, uh, I guess, I guess, sort of the, the songwriting process, uh, for how this, this, this new record came together. I think in a way it just kind of like naturally happened to like sort of culminate into this thing where it was almost like we were all like super, super present and super ready to like make this thing happen because like we had this moment, like during, during COVID and during the lockdowns and all that, like we were, sort of like taking a mini hiatus i mean like at the end of 2019 like we were like sort of burnt out a little bit like coming off of like touring and playing shows off of not an exit um and then it's just like doing a lot and then like the quarantines happen like COVID happened and we just kind of like our living situations like kept us apart from each other and we're like that's totally fine let's take this moment to like breathe and then like we snap back like when like we all got vaccinated and whatnot like we snap back and we're just like it's time like it's it's time to do this thing again and like much like like the song it's time by truth club gosh dang it (laughs) (laughs) that that comes up all the time like every time i say it's time now i cannot not hear that and it's ruined me um but yeah so like i think we like really all kind of like you know took a step away and took a breather and then like after we came back together after quarantine and whatnot, we're like, yeah, it's kind of like it feels right. Like we're we're all ready. We're all kind of like hankering to to do this, to like make some songs and to like do this with some serious intention, which like maybe feeds into a lot of like what you're saying right now. It's like we had that breath away and then like we kind of realigned our sights a little bit, like with that breath away, and then like we all snap back in. We're just like, Yeah, let's let's do this thing. And like that definitely is i think a contributor to that like feeling of it being like a little bit more like focused um because i think individually we all got a little bit more focused during that time period and then also i mean subsequently like like travis was saying like a lot of the lyrical content does sort of like bounce around these like darker points these things that are like up in the air around a lot of a lot of our like mindscapes, like our, our our mental areas and whatnot, and it's like a lot of the content does sort of like bounce around that. And I think during that time, like we were feeling a lot of that, like collectively. And I think it's it just like it was it was just like all there, in a, in a sense. And we we kind of yeah, I guess brought it together. And then like Travis really conjured up a lot of like the emotional content of the lyrics and it just like uh, yeah it just it made sense it, it happened it happens very naturally i, I feel mm-hmm. yeah because i mean this record just it just sounds like a band that is just just the the chemistry is so tight between you know everyone and it just sounds there's just so much drive behind the record and you know you hear some music from maybe more established acts or just anyone and sometimes you can kind of listen in and be like there's just you know you listen you're like just there's like why are you guys making this record like there's there's clear there's no drive here but this record is is the complete opposite where it's like this is a band that is determined to just 
we're gonna fucking do this and uh th- despite it being such a, a dark record i think obviously you have the lighter you know lighter uh you know undertones in the lyrics sometimes you know the clouds opening up but also i just think just the the band chemistry is just, just so on point that i think that really really drives home like you guys being such an awesome band uh i, I I don't know why I'm I'm having to have all these signifiers like you guys are amazing, you guys are great. I'm not being held at gunpoint. I you guys make great music. Uh, <laughs> you're not. I'm not going to turn my what my laptop camera and there's a guy holding a gun to my head. Uh, Mike Kala holding a gun to my head, saying nice things, or 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 your publicist Tom with the uh, on the other side also <laughs> holding a uh, a gun to my head. Um, they don't seem like gun guys. Not really. I mean, you know, t- Tom's Canadian and and Mike. I mean, he's been in North Carolina for a while, but even then, you know, I don't, I don't know if there's if North Carolina has like a strong gun culture or anything compared to it like does. other southern states. Oh, it does. That, yeah. Well, then, uh, that there's a funny, there's a little flame crossing the border, the border, um, the border person at the at the kiosk where you where you cross the freaking border it was like, y'all are from North Carolina. And we're like, yeah, and they were like, you really don't have guns in your car. We're like, no, and you're like, really? <laughs> oh my god, that. Uh, well, I'm moving to North Carolina in January, so that that makes me really, really uh, excited to 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 move and be ready for all the 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 gun culture I'm about to run into. Um, but yeah, uh, Maddie can finally shoot. <laughs> I can finally, finally go to the shooting range. I can finally go to the shooting range. I've never shot a gun before. I I've never shot a gun. I mean, I, I mean, airsoft guns and, and paintball guns, but like live I'll, ammunition, never done it. I'll show you how to do it. It's not. <laughs> it, it's easy. It also is good because <laughs> like proper gun safety, it like makes. I mean, guns are guns are can be bad, but proper gun etiquette, right? It like sort of desensationalizes it a bit and puts it into context if you ever want to be taught how to responsibly fire a firearm let me know i'll be I in will... north carolina promoting the gun culture apparently <laughs> on r slash indie heads podcast no i'm just kidding promoting gun, gun, gun culture and running from the chase uh because it was it's weird because i i ordered <laughs> i ordered the record and in the in the record was a was a small handgun. It was really weird that you guys did that bundle. No. <laughs> uh, it, it's just that's just, just I mean it makes sense. You know you want you know it, you know you, gimmicks these days. You gotta do what you can. But yeah, this super exclusive promo item handgun, the Truth Club gun. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's like totally you got a bootleg copy of the record. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's it's pretty. I mean, I don't know. I mean, may, maybe maybe someone was you know thinking of me. They they saw they saw my name, or it's like that man needs a handgun, or or it's a, a a a gun running situation gone wrong where they they put the guns in the wrong package. Like you were supposed to put the guns with the with the DVD players. You put it with the vinyl. What's going on? Uh, that's my impression of a North Carolina uh, gangster. If the North Carolina mob exists. Uh, that was a joke. Please do not come after me. They'll um, never look in the red eye warehouse. They'll never <laughs> look. There. Yeah. What's hilarious is, is our record came with a magic card, a Magic the Gathering card yes. instead, which which is pretty far away from from a gun. <laughs> I feel like Magic seems like it's it's getting more popular among amongst bands these days because I just saw Foxing uh, in St. Louis and they were selling Magic cards. So it, you know. I, th- I think we got to set up a Foxing versus Truth Club magic battle and see who the best band is between the two of you when it comes to uh, playing Magic the Gathering. Honestly, it would, that'd be kind of sick. It would be cool if we could make, like assemble enough like artists to do something m- similar to like a celebrity basketball type game, but it's like a Magic the Gathering tournament. I, that would be a lot. I think that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, that would yeah. be cool. Yeah, Post Malone's already there. That's a million dollar idea. There. Oh yeah, Post Malone. He's our he's our superstar. He's he's who we get early on, bringing million dollar investments to this this wonderful idea. We're we're cooking here. I I genuinely do think that it could be like a, a celebrity all star Magic the Gathering. I I think there's a lot of potential there. There's a lot of potential. Truth Club versus Post Malone. 
Posty, if you're listening to this, hit us up. Let's play some magic. <laughs> um delaney did you have any uh i i feel like i've been i've been taking up the space here so i i'm more than happy to pass pass it off to you with with more questions about uh the new record running from the chase hey man i'm right with you everything you're saying is my thoughts also but um i was curious about the album cover um like was that was that sort of y'all's idea did that come from the photographer how how collaborative was that i don't it was like collaborative in the sense that i th- i mean like i think with like it's always approval by committee right like i think i think like i kind of had this vague idea of of like us in the water um like in water or something and I kind of like ran that by, I was like, what do y'all think of this? I didn't really have any reference photos or like, I didn't really, I'm not, I'm not visual artist really. So I didn't draw anything up, but I just had this vague idea. And I was like, I, our very talented friend Walker, I was like, I think Walker can sort of actualize this. And I was like, do y'all want to go, do you want to like try and do it? And everyone was like, yeah, that sounds cool. And then we had a really fun day where we just swam in the, james river and floated fun and exhausting it was fun and really (laughs) exhausting yeah we just we went to richmond where our friend walker was living at the time and uh yeah he somehow like swam out into the middle of the river under a bridge with the camera in his hand and didn't get it wet and then climbed up on like the jetty or not jetty but whatever it is beneath the bridge and stood up there while we swam up current and then floated down and we got a really cool picture. <laughs> we like looked at them the next morning and everyone was like, Oh, this is what you're talking about. Like this is, this was like the, and I was like, yeah, this is better than I even thought it could have been. So yeah, we got so lucky with that. It was really cool. Like Walker did an amazing oh, job. It's a, it's a really, really good album cover. It's definitely one of my favorites of the year. Um, and also I, it's, it's very, very fitting for the album which is, you know, what you'll want. Uh, it all it all feels very unpretentious, just the whole thing, while being ambitious, like Maddie said. Which mm-hmm. Thank God. A plus. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's nice to hear, for sure. Yeah, because, you know, it, it is, I, I mean, I would say it's, it's yeah, one of the best album covers of the year. Uh, I, I'm very glad that uh, the Indie Kids now have another canonical swimming album cover next to Slint's uh, Spiderland. Uh, I'm glad that... <laughs> that when when people do make that, that there's another album they can point to being like hey we're not copying slint we're copying truth club instead um because if i have to see an any fucking image of a, of a band swimming and then get compared to spiderland i just i don't know i i don't know what i'm gonna do uh it's just it's sickening uh so i'm very glad that there's another canonical uh swimming album cover out there um i did want to ask i did read uh a talk house interview that you guys did uh talking about some of your musical inspirations uh about about the record and i mean one thing again this is a music podcast so let's talk about music i love it because i feel like very rarely you really do ask bands about the music that they love and, and they really like so i'm just gonna rattle off two of the ones that really stood out to me because these are two of my favorite artists right now uh Lamelda, I was I saw that and I was like, okay, I knew this band was for me because if this band fucks with Lamelda, we're we're in good company because I I love Lamelda. I literally have her album tattooed on my arm here. I have the things album cover. So uh I mean how 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 did you guys discover Lamelda and you know what does her music mean to you? I feel like I literally remember seeing I think it was maybe thanks when it first came out literally on like, I mean, like fuck Spotify, but on like the Spotify, <laughs> like discovery weekly yeah. or whatever, like back when that first came out. And I remember like just being like totally captivated. I, I think it was, Oh, I don't remember what song it was, but I just remember being completely captivated and like just starting to listen to it. I think around the same time as like Howdy and all that stuff um, mm-hmm. or like 
I don't know. Wow. I feel like my brain is flooding with memories from being like post college. Like, and like, um, but yeah, I think it, yeah, I don't know. Um, I just remember just being like totally captivated by her voice and, and, and melodies and just like musical choices and lyrics, like the whole, I guess that's, I guess it's kind of everything. <laughs> um, but yeah. Lamelda rules. Yeah, I mean, what what I love about her record, and I think I think it kind of translates to to how this record sounds, is that there's such uh in in, in intimacy where listening to it feels like you are conversating with a friend, but it doesn't feel like you know word of you know like stream of consciousness or anything like that. It, it just feels like hey, I'm in the room with you guys, like as you're just playing the album through, and. Like, I feel like that's really, really rare these days just because either it's too lo-fi or, you know, it's too on the nose. Um, and I think you guys really, like, hit the the nail on the head of, like, intimacy, but not, like, so, so close to you that, you know, you can barely breathe, you know. Um, but that does lead me to another artist that I was going to mention. Uh, Travis, you mentioned Spear of the Beehive, which, of course, I also love Spear of the Beehive. I love that record in 2021. And I'm curious how, like, sort of the more, I guess, in some ways, like, psychedelic, uh, almost shoegaze electronic soundscapes kind of translated to this record, which I, I would say, like, in terms of a of an overall feeling, I definitely understand where you're coming from. But I do think sonically, like, I, I'm curious to, to hear what you picked up from that record that kind of translated to your own songwriting. I think it's kind of like, because I don't really know if, I mean, I could say literally that like a whole lot of, in terms of like experimenting with like instrumentation, like translated from that. Like, I mean, I really want to get into like sampling and like synth stuff and like for, like I want to get a 404 and start messing with stuff like that. I mean, all the, all of the sample based stuff that they do is like so cool and a lot of other artists do that really effectively and really well but i i think the thing that just being like a really long-term fan of theirs that i've always thought has been so cool about their records is just like just like the atmosphere and like the texture like it's not i think what i picked up on or or just sort of like really paid attention to is just like the nuance of of yeah like of atmosphere and texture like it even if it was a guitar like wasn't a guitar like doing something just like how from release to release it's very clear like that there's like a palette like there's like a sonic palette that they choose to utilize and like throughout the entire record you can kind of hear those elements like being showcased and like used again and like each record i feel like has like its own distinct sort of solid sonic palette like you know it's like pleasure suck is like really smeared you know what i mean it's like mm -hmm. really hazy and like woolly and <clears throat> you know like um <clears throat> like oh my god like hypnic jerks is like really it feels really lush and vibrant you know and like mm -hmm. um all of like the pad like the synth pads and stuff and like a lot of those like really delicate acoustic guitars all of that like all those arrangements are really filled out and obviously like the, the entertainment death is like so like jagged and and like harsh but also like really vibrant and i don't know i, I just feel like when i listen to them I, it's like very clear because i always listen to the records front to back when i listen to them and it's just like very cool to me how intentional it seems like they are with this sort of yeah like the sonic palettes that they choose to like they used to like define the sound of the of each record and I, I feel like when we were writing these songs i like really wanted it was just like the notion of like cohesion that i wanted to like make sure was like integral you know like i, I mm -hmm. wanted to make sure that the integrity of like the songs being cohesive with one another was maintained and like doing that through atmosphere and texture you know yeah uh, again, I fully agree on all, on all on all fronts on that. Even I'm not a you know I'm not a musician, but the the way they're able to kind of uh, it, it just it's just like I just don't understand how they how they are able to 
put all these like disparate elements together into like one cohesive song and it just doesn't it doesn't sound like shit like it's just it sounds like this one cohesive whole that's just made out of you know all these completely separate weird parts and it all like comes together like really naturally and beautifully um and kim i don't want to leave you out of this either uh you mentioned lulu and i really love that lulu record from from last year so I, i'm curious uh like why why you know why you you love that record and how you think that kind of translated uh to the recording of this record yeah i think i feel kind of interesting in, in this spot because indie rock and like alternative rock is definitely like th- those being like the large umbrellas um uh, is like guitar driven music with drums and basses probably the music that i listen to the least outside of playing in this band and then also like you know going to shows and whatnot that we're playing at so um i don't know that, that album particularly i think for me i listen to a lot of like hip-hop and r&b and stuff like that and then also been getting really into a lot of latin american music um but that album particularly i've been blasting that album for the past like year and a half and i think just like it, it's so interesting because it does blend so much of like hip hop and then like some like sampled vibes of just like repetitive just like loopiness and whatnot but then it also like blows out distorted like bass feels and like distorted like guitars and i think the like sort of that sort of like release of energy is definitely something that i had a hard time like sort of capturing on this record and it's something that i like work towards a lot on this record of like because when i play guitar on my own i definitely like i'm a lot more subdued and more relaxed and more methodical which the, the parts that i put on this record definitely still do the guitar parts that i put on siphon and like the second guitar parts that i put on siphon that are just like sort of like heavy distorting just like blowing out like definitely come from a place that like that album comes from a bit in my mind where it's just like just like slamming it out there, like just like letting it just like explode out there. And that album does that a lot and it's it's super, super sick. Um but yeah, I, I do just like how that album like mixes that energy of just like I don't know, it's kind of a cruising album, but at the same time it it will just like slam out. It's cool. Yeah, I, I mean I think that definitely like translates to this record where you do have these moments of like more like meta you know like more meditative moments uh and then you know you get slammed with something like blue eternal or or some of the more distorted guitar lines on, on siphon or even within the same song on is this working where you just get slammed with this this distortion and noise and you know it, it's just yeah it's really really awesome um but I'm trying to think uh, if I if I had anything else. I mean, I, I guess, you know, uh, North. So it seems like, you know, it's kind of been one of the narratives this year in, I guess, the, the greater indie music sphere where it really feels like North Carolina is having a moment again when it comes to, you know, sort of the the music that's coming out of, of the state, you know, between you guys and, and Wednesday, uh, Indigo D'Souza, which um, I think Delaney, you had a question about about Indigo D'Souza that. I will let you get to at some point, I promise. Um, so, I mean, you know, like, what are your thoughts on, 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 you know, sort of like, how do you think uh, like rally and I guess the general North Carolina area, like affects, you know, your songwriting, how you guys operate as a band, because, you know, I think it's, you know, spaces are really, really important for, for how an artist operates where I, I think an artist coming out of New York is not going to be making the same music or they be they may be making the same music as someone out of LA, but they're going to be coming to two very different conclusions or there's just going to be these little subtle differences that really um, accentuate the, 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 the regionalness of, of each scene. So hopefully that, hopefully that made sense. Yeah. I, if anyone else has something to say, uh, yeah. Um, I, I think that like being in North Carolina is really cool because living in the triangle, like you have these three cities or towns where there's like stuff happening. Um, 
and it's a little bit different in everyone, but everyone's still able to like come together and do stuff. Like if there's a show happening in Durham, people are going to come from Carborough to see it or from Raleigh to see it. Um, it might not be the same thing for like Asheville. Like if something's happening in Asheville, it would be kind of a trek to make it out there to see it. But like you still have kind of the sense of community, um, but it's not a huge place. So it's there's not like there's not going to be like a super cool show every single night. Um, and that's not to say that there isn't like relatively cool stuff happening all the time, but like, you're not going to have like super packed out, sold out shows like, um, every night. Um, and it's, so it's cool because when something cool happens, you kind of see everyone and like, the in that sense it's like pretty unified I guess and you sort of start to see the same people and like develop community in a really cool way that like I I can't say whether or not that exists in like bigger places like Philly or New York but um I kind of like to think that it like creates like a cool sense of community in in the size place that we are yeah, and like to speak to that, like I, I think it's cool because a place like the Triangle, like you at least my experience moving here from Wilmington, which is on the coast, like moving to Raleigh for college, like Wilmington is like at the very end of I-40 and it's like kind of out of the way in like a East Coast regional sense. So like we did not get any like really any sort of like established touring acts that would like like cool stuff that would come through Wilmington when despite being very much into stuff like that and tried to be tuned in to cool stuff like in high school before you know none of that stuff came through Wilmington and so like I had you know using the internet and scouring the internet for like influence and stuff was crucial um as it is for a lot of people a lot of other smaller places but like it was cool coming to Raleigh because like the triangle is a, is a small enough or is is a big enough place where like there was this really great network of like venues and also diy spaces where all these cool like touring bands would come through and so you could like glean influence from all of these cool artists like in person and like meet these people and like you know create like start building like a network that like spreads across you know can spread across the entirety of the country you know in a way but also is like still small enough that it doesn't feel claustrophobic if that that, that might be mm -hmm. like a little too dramatic of a word but you know it's like I feel like when I visit larger metropolitan areas especially like cities like American cities that are like gilded for like rock music or like you know just like artists like New York or Philly or like Chicago or something like that it can just talking to people like I feel like it can at least for how how slow things move down here it would be like really hard i feel like to keep to try and do what we do and like at least make music at the pace that i want to like it would feel like really hard to do that somewhere where it seems like you have to like there's as much going on as there is like somewhere else so i, I feel like that delicate balance is really cool like you still get to see all of these cool artists they all come through but it's like everything moves a little slower you know like they say about mm -hmm. the south yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah. i definitely relate as someone you know I, i'm i'm from the st louis area and i think it's very similar where you know things move a little slower and i, and I just moved, moved back here from uh los angeles after you know living there for two years and the change of pace like it's it was much needed but it's definitely like a culture shock of oh wow like to go from everything is happening to you know some things are happening is you know it's a lot and i think it's definitely uh for some artists and for some scenes it's really necessary because i think once you put which i think it's what that's why like the i guess the, the the triangle scene or the north carolina scene is so special is that there's definitely a spotlight on you guys right now but it's not as blinding of a spotlight as you know people have done to previous scenes i mean seattle comes to mind of of a scene that got a huge spotlight on it that was blinding and you know uh, maybe wreaked havoc upon the the greater music industry for a really really long time 
uh, in negative and, and positive aspects. So, you know, I, I guess trying trying to keep trying to keep finding that balance where hey, you really want to spotlight the scene and all these great artists that are that are local, but not have it blow up so much to an extent that you know your your process for 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 writing just for for living in general is is changed in a really negative way so definitely definitely relate to your guys' sentiments there um but i did mention indigo to souza and delaney i know you wanted to talk uh indigo real quick if we're talking local artists i did um first of all fingers crossed things th- north carolina could still blow up in a bad way fingers crossed this doesn't happen i think <laughs> indie fans are all like <laughs> right now like what's happening over there so let's hope we don't turn into a pack of wolves about that um <laughs> don't worry don't worry a bunch of annoying indie rockers aren't going to move to raleigh because they're building an apple campus so all of the tech guys are already showing up so Yay. yeah don't worry about that yeah I agree yeah, i'm just <laughs> raising let's the go. rent they're they're on our on our side by raising the rent not if you see right. If you see Steve Jobs' ghost, you know the rent's going up. So. <laughs> Philadelphia, too. Just kidding. Anyway, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I wanted to ask what uh, collaborating with Indigo D'Souza was like. And maybe if there's any other artist y'all would like to collaborate with in the future. Uh, I mean, it was Post it was. Really- <laughs> yeah, post Malone. Yeah, that would be that would be sick. He's yeah, but <laughs> thanks, Cam. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I mean it was a it was really special. I mean, like I, I feel like I've mentioned this in the past, but I, I mean it's just cool because like I just she just like happened to have been like a a really old friend of mine. You know, like like her and I know each other because our parents we're friends and like we would get dragged to these weird parties that they would have when we were like young and we'd be the only kids there and like got to hang out with each other. And then I think there was one time we went to one, I think when we were like adolescents and it had been become apparent that we had both gotten into like playing music and writing songs and stuff. And then I think that like, we were kind of like, oh, whoa, that's so cool that you like doing that too. And and she definitely felt like one of the first people that like I was able to identify with that was my age. That was like all like being a kid, but like playing music. It was like so severe, like it was like the most important thing. And that was really cool. And I, I you know, we've like obviously kept up with each other on and off over the years. And I have always just thought that it would be really cool to just like work on any sort of like serious and endeavor together but like not in a way that i think like both of us are so scattered and like are all also just doing our own thing i didn't necessarily like i wasn't banking on anything to happen but i was always like this would be so nice and then it just happened to work out that she was around that day when we were recording that song and also like yvonne and i came to the kind of came to the conclusion that we we're like, oh, this arrangement, like we're doing we're doing OK, but like it would be so cool if we had someone else to come like sing on this. And I mean, of course, like Indigo was the first person that popped to mind when I was like, oh, another voice. Like it would be so cool if she were around and could do this. And she was. And it was really cool. Like it was just it was really special because, I mean, I think, like I said, it's something that I dreamed of for a long time. But like it kind of that particular sort of this particular collaboration kind of just like fell into place last minute. And so that was like really cool. Kind of like the juxtaposition of those sentiments. Yeah. That's really awesome. I think, uh, I think that comes across as a listener. I really like hearing that because that, that track does feel really, really special. Thanks. Yeah, it definitely does feel special for sure. Yeah. Uh, Um, I I had a you know I, I I didn't have a whole lot more to say but I I do have a I want to pitch you guys on an idea that I had um so Tom Morello of course of Rage Against the Machine just you know got into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and you know he has this series of uh of online videos called Dangerous Truths 
And I was thinking you guys should collab and you guys would become the Dangerous Truths Club. I think that'd be really awesome and rad. Uh, yeah. Where he just, he, he, you know, he he plays one of his insane guitar lines and then says uh, something that you learned in in freshman year of college from your uh, your your Marxist friend. I'm Tom Morello, and this is Dangerous Truths. Did you know that George Washington once sold a black man for a keg of molasses? <laughs> I think I think that could be a really big, you know, we were talking about, you know, really blowing up the North Carolina scene. I think that could really take you guys to the next level, you know? So what do you think, Sharks? That's cool. Like, so it's like, I, I got to check this out. So it's kind of like, it's like guitar riffs and then like Tom, like armchair politics, like aphorisms kind of thing. Like, that's cool. Yeah. Rat, Tom Morello is cool. Um, that sounds funny. I should watch that. I, I I would do that, but I'm trying to think about what our spin on it would be. You know, what mm -hmm. do you think, Yvonne? What do you didn't mean to implicate you if you look like you <laughs> had, had an idea. Do you have an idea, Cameron, about what our spin on it could be? I'm I'm drawing. Well, I think Cameron and I play a lot uh, of Apex Legends. We mm. actually were playing a lot before this uh very podcast conference <laughs> um and so i feel like i mean i feel like this is very different but i feel like just truth club if we could get one of either elise or yvonne to get in the trio i mean we could just stream apex on twitch we could just do that i mean i'm a, I'm a, I'm a Fortnite player but i'm i'm more oh, than okay. happy to volunteer to, to hop on apex you yeah know? I can never get into like Apex. I tried and I, and I did play like very early on. It just got to be, it's just so more like it's so competitive and it's uh, so hard. It's so competitive. And I think depending on where you live, it, it like when I, when I, cause I was trying to get more into it, but at least at the time, like two years ago or whatever, like the LA servers for Apex were really, really bad. So like you, it, you couldn't play, like you would just lag too much. Ooh. And like, I was like, I just want to get better at this. I want to have another game in my roster and nope, just, just the game would not let me get good at it because it kept ping ponging me all over the place while I was another trying to play a point, game. Another point for North Carolina, our servers are easy breezy. You know what I'm saying? It's easy. <laughs> That's yes. why I'm trying to get over to you guys. Why well, I'm moving in January. Go. Cause I gotta, I gotta get that, that good internet. Cause I don't, I didn't, LA had good internet, but didn't have good internet for apex. You know, I gotta, I gotta up my skills as you know an elite gamer go to the the, the home of, of of fortnite battle royale uh, yeah the fortnite headquarters are here as well so the the yeah. former owners of Bandcamp. uh yeah they just they really fucked that shit up huh i don't really have anything else to say other than that but because <laughs> i mean i was gonna say the things in the music industry they're getting so bad these days you know at, at times as you know in the in the exit cycle music video you guys are all sharing just one twin bed with four people i mean it's just it's in such an awful place these days for you guys yeah. probably in the chocolate factory grandparent style <laughs> I was, I was, that was, that was the second one. That was the second thing I was like, okay, I can either go this direction or I can go, oh, you guys are going to be in the, the, the new Wonka movie with Timothy Chalamet when they, at the, the end of, of Wonka where they, they set it up to be like, Hey, just here's this origin story of Willy Wonka. And then at the end, Hey, there, there's a little kid there and there's Charlie and you look through the windows and you see the grandparents, you don't see any of their faces, no faces, just you, you peek in and then boom, Wonka title screen. It all comes back together full circle. You see Steve Jobs' ghost in the background, just <laughs> smiling. <laughs> Steve Jobs in the background, smiling. Uh, maybe we'll have Post Malone playing Magic there as a little cameo uh, for, for the fans, for, for the uh, ending explained <laughs> YouTubers. Like, 100, 101 Easter eggs you missed in Wonka 2022. <laughs> a reaction video to that video. Oh, my God. I mean, this Utopia. is this is this is such a beyond. That trailer looks so bad. What like what's going on with movies these days? Movies are fucked. Uh, and I say <laughs> this as as the SAG strike just ended. Uh, but I, I think even even people in SAG would be like, yeah, no, movies are fucked. That's why we went on strike. But you know, you know, the SAG's on strike. 
you know, soon these days with the way the labor movement's going, the Oompa Loompas are going to go on strike too. And it's just going to be, I mean, where are we going to get our, our beautiful candies and chocolate? But, um, <laughs> um I, I guess, I, but, but, you know, back to the record, I guess just sort of to, to wrap things up in, in a bit of a bow. I mean, you guys just finished the record. Of course, you, you know, it's only been out a month. I mean, I don't want to be like, Hey, morning music now, now, because especially as we're talking about, you know, the the pace because it was only you know this between this record and the last one it was four years i mean do you guys have any i mean you already mentioned travis you're kind of hoping to try to you know try out more so with like samplers and stuff i mean you guys have any any ideas for the next record just you know or right now just enjoying the the moment as it is and try not to think too much about the the future of, of the band i don't in, really in know way. how to i don't really know how to enjoy anything um but uh i mean we've, we've always got we've always got songs like i mean that's i don't know if like you know i don't necessarily have any high concepts about record like an album or anything right now but i mean like that was like the cool thing about writing this record and you know talking about we were talking about that the process earlier i mean it was it was a much more measured experience together and i mean and part of that measured experience or like measured process was like the fact that you know it's like we kind of took stock of all of the song ideas we had accumulated over the years like both like while we were writing and recording not an exit and like after you know between you know and so and we had like an abundance of ideas and then we kind of cherry picked the ones that we thought were the most cohesive and the strongest for this record but i mean like there were plenty of other songs that we were working on up until we got into the studio that we were like these are pretty good too you know and like there's more ideas like you know so i mean yeah we've got we've got stuff in the minds you know we've got there's ore to be pickaxed for sure but yeah i don't <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, you know, mining for materials like in Fortnite and eventually you're going to build a, a wonderful uh, big base that you will get one pump shotgunned eventually. Maybe. Yeah. But all comes metaphorically, back to metaphorically, guns. Metaphor, metaphorically all. of course. <laughs> it all comes back to that. And that's why people are scared to put a spotlight, because if you shine a spotlight in North Carolina, they're just going to shoot that light out and it's going to be a bad time for you. Um <laughs> Um, Delaney, did you did you have any 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 uh, last things you wanted to say? Any any final thoughts on the record you wanted to share? Yeah, I kind of uh, I kind of wanted to ask if there is a song that y'all are uh, most proud of, and also maybe one that you're most excited to do live. I imagine those are two different mindsets, but what do I know? I'm not a musician. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Those are definitely two different mindsets. Um... I think that question would be answered differently between each of us. Um, but for me, I definitely think uh, Dancing Around My Tongue is the one that I am one of the most proud about. And then also Siphon, because those guitar parts I literally set for hours and hours and hours picking away note by note, trying to figure out and to make happen. And then I made it happen. Felt great. Um, and then those are also... <laughs> super fun to play live because they're so intense and challenging we actually like we're pretty bad at playing dancing around my tongue live because it's a hard song to play live and it's a hard song to play in general so we like avoid playing that live as much as possible but we're working on it yeah it's just really it's a really intricate song cameron really cameron really cooks on that song and I mean, honestly, it's not Cameron who has the who has trouble. It's me. So, <laughs> mm. I mean, that's that's because you're singing and you're also cooking. What song do you like? Oh, you like playing those live? Okay, I I thought I forgot that that's what you also said. I was gonna. Say, <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel I feel really proud. Of, I feel like I think "Suffer Debt" is a song that feels really potent, and like I feel really proud of that song because I feel like rhythmic like it has such an interesting rhythmic feel i feel like and like the the kind of um i feel like this the like tempo and sort of like energy shift that like the whole outro does like i that was like 
something that I feel like I labored over and like we kind of labored over for a like substantially longer time like leading up to the recording process than a lot of the other songs like that was definitely a song that like structurally took a lot of time and i feel really proud of like i feel like it turned out really well and it doesn't feel contrived like it it, it all makes sense despite being kind of like such a vibe check you know um but i think uh, it was a really fun song to play live because like I mean, I, I really like the recorded version of that song, but it's like pretty, it's pretty tame, but like we've really like embellished um, the dynamics of it live. And like, we've kind of like, we'll kind of do like an extended jam in the beginning now that like feels really fun. It's like a lot more interpretive live. And I, I really like that. Yeah. And... <laughs> um I was sitting here trying to calculate what's my favorite song to or that I'm most proud of and it's like really hard um I feel like I feel a big sense of pride for all of the songs that I wrote on guitar the, the songs I wrote guitar parts for um but it's almost like my four children and I can't pick a favorite. Um, yeah, I feel really proud of how far I've come even since like being in this band, like right before the not an exit release show, Travis taught me what a power chord was. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> um, and I'd like never played guitar with a guitar pick before I did a lot of like finger picking stuff but um there was a, like a lot of like really basic like rock and roll guitar things that I didn't know um and so it's like so cool to think about that and then like feel so like proud of the parts that I was able to contribute to the album despite like not being as like super technically advanced as, as Travis and Cameron are, who are like, so, so proficient on, um, proficient is such an understatement, but anyway, um, mm. so I feel really, really proud of that, um, in general, but I don't know if I can pick a favorite. Um, but I will say not on the album, but it's time both, the proudest of that bass that's my favorite bass line i've ever written by far and that is also my favorite one of my favorites to play for sure yeah the bass line definitely bumps i was i was really hoping someone mentioned it's time yeah that's, I, my, I, that's my song of the year I, say, I introduced that did i introduce it's time to you delaney yeah you did i think it was uh uh i don't remember when or how it was, it was before probably your obscurity knocks yeah, I, think, I think it was yeah because you know i of course uh, as soon as uh mike was like hey here's new truth comes i'm like ah give me 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 mm -hmm. uh and it's time is fucking great i completely get why it's not on the record because it's definitely feels much more of kin with not an exit versus this record but you know good point i but even but even then i i when, when i saw this the, the the track list i was like oh man where's it's time come on like i love it's yeah. time but um like I think it's I think it's time is like this perfect like transitional period between you know the work you guys are doing on that record versus the, this current one where you kind of hint at some of the more like ambitious elements but you still have you know a lot of, a lot of the scrappiness and again that baseline is just fucking sick it's a sick baseline you fucking killed it um but yeah uh thank you guys for for joining us uh what you guys uh this is probably going to go out in about a week a week, two weeks. So, uh, I mean, coming up either for the rest of the year or into 2024, what do you guys uh, have coming up besides, uh, which by the way, Hey, if you, if you're, if you listen to the entire thing, you've not listened to running from the chase, go fucking do that. You weirdo. Why would you listen to this entire thing and then not go listen to that album? But uh, what do you guys have cooking for the, the rest of the year and into 2024? Uh... Wait, <laughs> May we maybe have a couple of shows cooking up for January, but the only thing that we really can say for sure right now is just that we're going to finally, finally put all of our merch up on band camps probably next week. So yeah, <laughs> see that because we have been <laughs> pretty slow on the uptake with that one, but, um, 
I got the fine. long sleeve. I got the long sleeve with the record. It's it's a sick T-shirt. Hey. I'm probably again, like I I as soon as I got that, I wore that to whatever. I think I got that, and I was like, all right, I'm going to a show tonight. Just throw on this this long sleeve. Hope somebody knows <laughs> who. <laughs> so oh, hope yeah. comes up to me. Uh, but yeah, my again, mom was wearing that shirt today. Hell yeah! That's I gotta figure out what to, I gotta figure out what to do. Like, because I, I still have the magic card. I gotta figure out. How I, I need to like maybe display that like the the baseball card collectors do get like a glass casing for it you know make sure it's in, in proper mint condition always because the value is going to go way up you know uh, as you know uh, you know because eventually eventually and you know we 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 didn't we didn't discuss this because this is before we start recording but I did say you guys should invest in the and the uh, the the metaverse the crypto space and making a truth club NFT I think that could be again a really good big thing for your band so truth coin yeah that would be a really valuable contribution to the world absolutely mm-hmm. i mean you got again <laughs> all these all these tech people are coming to north carolina you got to compete with them and i think truth coin can really really can really do that you know use truth coin to get apex legend skins uh what's the get get it uh get yourself a, a fancy knife on counter strike 2 you know the, the honestly go. It would be kind of cool to have like a like a skin like a Fortnite or Apex skin like like if I could play as like Elise that would be really funny. That would be <laughs> that would be really fun. I'd literally sell my soul to make that happen. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you guys for for joining us. Any any last things uh, you want to say to our listeners before uh, before we head out? Just thanks for listening to the record and thank you both for your kind words and for having us. Yeah. Thanks for, and the great questions. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, again, truth club, go listen to running from the chase. You weirdos. If you listen to this entire thing, go listen to that album. One of the best, one of the best albums of the damn year. Uh, again, it'll be placing high on my own album of the year list. So thank you guys for joining us and thank you listeners for listening. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.